let's call the Monday, January 10th Architecture Review Board meeting to order. Uh, Steve, if you would call the roll, please. Yes, sir. Joe Clark. Present. Alderperson Savaglio. Present. Jerry Jones. Present. Richard Lindy. Present. Pam Langan. Present. Robert Heimrell does not appear to be here, and Dave Aldig are not here. And if everyone would please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. And any potential conflicts of interest for our board members this afternoon? Hearing none, we'll move to item 2.1, the approval of the minutes from way back on November 22nd. Motion from Jerry, second from Marcus. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It was approved. Brings us to item number 3.1, the proposed construction of a new Tommy's Express car wash at 3627 Washington Avenue Frontage Road, the former Perkins restaurant. Uh, if that team could come to the podium, I believe the other handheld mic was there and give us a brief description of uh, your very interesting building and what you're proposing. Good evening, commissioners. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to talk to you today. My name is Peter Schwabe. I'm with Peter Schwabe, Inc. We're a general contractor, and we're working with Steve Killian, Jr. with the Killian Group. Um, we are a uh, contractor who's built uh, multiple times in Sheboygan before, and uh, the Killians asked us to come and help them present to you this uh, a new state-of-the-art car wash located in Washington. Steve, why don't you come up and introduce yourself? Great, thank you, and uh, thanks for the opportunity. I'm Steve Killian Jr. Uh, my family and our my family and I are very excited to hopefully bring a new state of the art uh, Tommy's Express car wash. Um, we think it'll be a great addition to the community here. Um, we've been very involved in the community for many years. Uh, we actually own and operate the McDonald's restaurants here in Sheboygan, so uh, we're very familiar with the community um, and excited to show you what we've put together for today. So, thank you. So the, the, from an architectural standpoint, um, we'll go to the, the first picture, as you can see here. I'll just give you a very brief overview. This is about a 5,200 square foot building located on a 1.6 piece of uh, acre piece of property, as was mentioned, the former Perkins uh, Bacon property right now, near the corner of um, Washington Avenue, just east of I-43. Um, we, uh, we position this in the, uh, on the site so it can be, uh, have, a, have a good looking entrance there or you can see coming in from the off of the the main road there actually be a, a a side entrance a frontage road entrance here the cars will enter all through the the canopy here come through and come out here on the on the on the, on the back side of it is um, this building is a pre-manufactured uh, metal structure made with acm metal panels for the red the black and the white there is also, you'll see, uh, these are um, uh, uh, aluminum, or uh, I'm sorry, proper term, stainless steel um, metal, metal pieces that um, will go along here, along with a composite material here. If, it, if you'd like, I'd be happy to pass around a material board. Here you go, sure. To give you a feel for how this is laid out, This is the site here. Um, this is Washington. This is the um, and access point right along here with the Funnage Road. There is currently a um, gas station on the very hard corner, and then another uh, business on this side. And um, our property will be accessed right off the Funnage Road on the um, north side of the property. Again, the cars will drive through the back side here, the, the south side, and to exit out here and have the choice of going and using the vacuum system over here to the, um, that would be to the east of the property, or exit out back again on the north side of the property.
from an elevation standpoint. You notice that it's an attractive building with glass to allow a lot of light to flow through the inside of the building while people are going through it. It is also set with two towers here. One tower is 24 foot tall, the other 28. The 28-foot tower building will have on the first level the control center where someone will be able to stand and see all activity at one time, what's going on. And the second story, the training and management uh, office up there. And with that, um, I'd like to turn it over to you to see if you have any questions to help me better explain it. I think I just need a fancier car to be able to take it there. <laughs> uh, no questions or comments from my end yet. Anyone, uh, other board members, questions? This is the first one that's being built in Sheboygan. Um, Steve, can you answer the question as far as other locations of this? Sure, so there's a few other in Wisconsin. Um, there's one in Wausau, I believe, and then there's um, in the so, in southeastern Wisconsin, Milwaukee area, there's uh, two, two or three that are actually called coast car washes. That was the original concept, and now Tommy's has started to Tommy's Express is starting to franchise these. So across the country or across the Midwest, there's about 60 of these right now, um, with a pretty aggressive growth plan. But and they've been in the car wash business for close to 50 years now as a family, and um, this is just their next step in evolution here. And like uh, like it was mentioned, it's really a state-of-the-art facility, and even with the light that comes into the car wash, it's an entirely different feel than the typical dark tunnel that you would go through when you go through a car wash, and um, it's really inviting from that standpoint. So we just think, uh, like I said, it's a, it's a new state-of-the-art uh, car wash we're excited about. So. Maybe if you could talk just a little about the mechanical systems and if there's any of that visible uh, or if that still needs to be designed at all, uh, how it integrates with the rest of the massing. It's a, it's a great uh, question. I have to, I'll be honest with you, you know, I'm not the expert on the actual system itself. I, and if you need me to, I can get an expert on a phone uh, with, with, with Tommy's. However, I can say this is a system that had that, like already being used throughout Wisconsin in a half dozen locations, as well as around the country. The system, um, in essence, one of the, one of the technological advances of it, I will tell you, is it has more of a magic carpet system than the, roll, the old fashioned rolling track to move cars through. Because of that, they're able to move cars through almost twice as fast than you would in a typical, a typical car wash as you see out there today, which allows obviously not only for um, a, a good washing system, but also for helping the, you know, the, the citizens of, of Sheboygan to get their car washed a little bit faster. Yes, Commissioner. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, you know, ground level or rooftop. Great. I, I, I do not have those details with me today, but I can get them for you if that would be, or I, or I can get someone on the phone and immediately tell us how that, how that works. So okay. typically without that information, we'd make that a requirement of the submittal that that be submitted to the city for approval um, so that we can make sure we don't end up with a monstrous rooftop unit. Absolutely. I can tell you that there's two hours, uh, there's two towers on, on there, are bathtubs that shield, uh, not only protects people to go up there to, uh, to take care of things up there, but also shields view from things. But we can confirm with you the visibility or lack of visibility of any HVAC units that are going to be on top or mechanical Perfect. on top of it. Yeah, the majority of the mechanicals for the, for the system itself are going to be inside um, the North Tower is, is there. They have literally a lower level and a MES level where all of their, their um, mechanical systems for their state-of-the-art car washer are, are stored. Sure. So, yeah, it's such a streamlined building, it would just be a shame to, to ruin those lines with some ugly mechanicals popping With the out. mechanical popping yeah. out of top of it. Yes, that, that, what, you're, what you're seeing there is, is what it will look like in the day. So if your viewpoint you're seeing here today, um, if there's a transformer, like you're looking, pointing at right there, um, we will do the best we can to, to shield those things with landscaping from here to there. Um, I do have a landscaping plan. And we'll be working with your um, landscaping department. Right now, we have a uh, transformer plan to be in the same location that you saw in the video. And as you can see, she does have some bushes um, surrounding it to help shield that from the view of the public. 
Marcus. Thank you very much. Um, I, I could use my projection voice without the mic, but the people at home wouldn't be able to hear me. Uh, I, I, my question would be, why the location for the transformer there and not off to the side or shielded like by a, a, a enclosure of some kind like where trash would go? It's a great, it's a great question. I've, we found with many of the buildings that we built that we energies have certain requirements of how close transformers have to be to building. So we're making the presumption that this matches what other, what other buildings we've built, how close they've wanted it. Um, if it is a requirement of the city and we energy is concurrent for us to move it to a different location, such as the existing location we have further off right there, thank you. Um, we will definitely consider that as an option. We placed it on there to show that there's a space near the building if we energy wants it to be that close to the mechanical room where a direct connection to, to the building would be. Um, the, the, we, we, we would be more than happy to consider other locations if, if they are open to it. Thank you very much for that clarification. Uh, I'm looking at the site plan and I'm looking at your parking area and I see some unusual shapes in the area where the cars would be parked, look like little Martian umbrellas or something. Yes. <laughs> Could you bring up the, uh, the about Tommy's and show, we should show some, um, the next one down further, right there. We probably can't zoom into that on, uh, if it says efficient processing. Um, nope, that's not it either, let's see. Are you able to bring up the PowerPoint present presentation that I'd given to you? Okay, we have, a, we have a PowerPoint presentation that has additional photos of the inside and the outside of the building. And he will show you, it'll show you a closer up of the vacuums is the answer that, as you said here. So looking at that plan there, there's about 20 of those uh, um, triangular shapes and those triangular shapes um, allow for um, vacuums that hang that hang over and allow people to get both sides of their car to vacuum. So I hope that answers your question. It does, thank you. Okay, thank you, Commissioner. Any other questions or comments? Pam? I see a lot of voice, I probably don't need that. Well, pass the mic down. So the people right. online can hear. People at home, right. Um, so this is the fanciest car wash I've ever seen, and I love to have a clean car, so I'm pretty excited this is going in. Is there anything, is the inside all, it's all car wash? Or, or is there an area for snacks or food or a... It is, the inside is 90% is car wash. If you could bring that picture you just pulled up there, show it, and it'd be a nice shot of the inside um, on the PowerPoint you just had a second ago. Um, is 90% car wash. There is an, there is what the inside looks like, wow. as you can see. It's very open, very light, very airy. Um, the, on the left side of there is the mechanical room where you see the glass door, mm -hmm. and then right where we're standing right now is the con central control room. There is not a location for people to come in and get peanuts and sandwiches and stuff like that. It's uh, it's meant primarily for the employees to have uh, to see what's going on and take care of the customer. Thank you. Sure. Look at that. Wow. Amazing. You don't get out of the car. Yeah. You stay right in it. You stay in the car. Correct. Ah, I was thinking you get out and they push your car through. Got it. Okay. You stay yeah, in the car. You want to dress that? Yeah, great. So we, um, there'll be three lanes of traffic. So the inside lane will be uh, for a cashier if someone wants to pay with cash. Um, and then the next two outside lanes will be set up to either recognize your license plate if you've bought a monthly subscription or you can use an app as well. Um, so the, those two lanes are meant to let cars bypass that are monthly members and the inside lane is for cash. You'll then pull in, there'll be someone that'll you know, greet you and you know, wave you on. And it's, it's not the typical rollers that you see in a car wash. It's, We'll call it a magic carpet, so it's much easier to get on, and it's and it's very smooth. It'll take you through um, our tunnel, and like we said, the the light is a really big plus. You don't realize how great the light is in a car wash until you've actually experienced this before. Um, and then we've got uh, your car will get clean. You'll it'll be dried off. You'll have the option to go to the vacuums or keep on going, and it's a very fast and efficient way um, to have your car washed. It also has the ability to. There's quite a few car washes where you have a bigger not a 
not a bigger like pickup truck have a hard time getting through where this car wash will allow those trucks to uh, to get through as well which is another benefit of the car wash Yes. Yep. You're the customer. Would you do it that we and so you never have to get out of your car. You can pull right in. And like I said, once you have a if you purchase a monthly subscription, it's a really efficient way um, to get through the car wash. Question for you on the in the glass. Uh, what I've seen in previous car washes that have had glass, especially in the winter, you get the fogging, the staining, and it's hard to get that out. Have you found a way to prevent it from doing that? Not oh, necessarily the steaming up, yeah. but, Nash, but you know, where you get the seepage and the, the water build up inside and you get the stains that are permanently there. You know, we, so I can't answer that entirely. Um, I could tell you that as part of the operation of this, there's an hourly cleaning schedule that we're going through, um, uh, pressure washing the floor and working. And so the details of that, I don't know, but they've, the system they've put together is very, has been very impressive. And I can tell you, I was at, um, at their headquarters recently in Holland, Michigan, um, and it was cold and, and there didn't seem to be a problem, but I, unfortunately I don't have more for you today. So. I can tell you that part of the system on the top of the, uh, top above the glass, there are venting systems to also help the, uh, some, some, when it gets too humid in there for some of the air to flow out. Uh, but depending upon the, the, the time of the year, whether those vents are open or not will, will vary greatly. Well, it's a fun building. If there are no more questions or comments, I would entertain a motion. We have a motion and a second. That's uh, with a condition of submittal of the mechanicals for approval of staff. Everyone is clear on what we're voting on. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion is passed. Great. Thank you very much. Commissioners, Alderman, thank you so what much. Is, what is your time frame for the project? Our time frame, it all depends upon the city. <laughs> we probably will be, we're shooting for a late fall opening, which of course all depends upon the architectural approvals and the construction commencement dates. So but Great. we're looking forward to it. Good luck to you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, that brings us to item 3.2, the proposed Construction of a new courtyard hotel by Marriott, uh, south of the Fairfield Inn location on S South Taylor Drive. Uh, if your team would come to the podium, make introductions, and give us a brief overview of what you're proposing, please. Sure. Uh, I'm Lucas Petra with MA Design, um, the architect on the project, uh, Stan Raymaker. He is a uh, owner's rep for Wisco Hotels, who um, did the phase one. Um, uh, Fairfield project um, just north of the site so that's split here so um, this one is a again a Marriott product uh, courtyard four stories uh, 49 foot uh, six inches high um, 117 rooms uh, with a indoor pool um, the exterior cladding is uh, primarily EFIS and uh, fiber cement, vertical fiber cement uh, panels. And then there's uh, just some miscellaneous um, exposed steel like the carport um, that'll have some stamped concrete below it. Um, and then as well as some um, awnings in the back, the, like trellis type awnings that have um, some uh, red cedar um, screenings. Um, and then as you come back here, uh, this is the, the southeast side uh, of the site. Um, all mechanical equipment will be screened and then a uh, courtyard um, kind of has a, a, a dedicated courtyard that uh, feeds off of the interior lounge and uh, bistro bar that's inside. Um, that is a, uh, um, a full functioning kitchen. Um, and, uh, and again, the screening on the outside is, um, there's just a, a molding down on the bottom or, or a base that is covered in EFIS. And then again, uh, with some um, red, uh, red cedar uh, um, fencing for either screening or, or the privacy part of it. Um, the, uh, there's a dumpster um, on the northeast corner that'll be made of uh, split face block. 
um, that will have a uh, trash recycle and then as well as a um, attached shed for um, just some, some site maintenance for the owner. Um, and then we are proposing to um, put uh, or combine the sign that uh, is currently there for the Fairfield um, to make it a Fairfield courtyard, um, one combined uh, sign. The board may recall that we had previously approved uh, Fairfield. So that Fairfield, when you take a look at the, the site plan, if you wouldn't mind uh, bringing up uh, the computer just a minute, Scott, with the site plan, um, you can see this is the existing Fairfield and then this is the proposed courtyard. So the front, when you're taking a look at it, is facing interior to this parking area or to kind of the back of the Fairfield. The side and kind of the rear um, sides of the new courtyard are probably the most visible from I-43 and Taylor compared to that front, just so everyone knows in terms of how the building lies on the site. And you know when you see this type of view this is looking kind of at the courtyard. You'd see maybe this front portion, and then these are the elevations that you would likely see as you drove north from the business park towards the intersection of Washington Avenue, um, or when you're heading north on I-43 that you'd be seeing the rear elevation and this west elevation. So just to kind of make sure that the board is familiar in terms of what are the most visible from the streets when taking a look at this. Yeah, thanks, Steve. That that was confusing to me initially, just the orientation of the yeah. building. Yeah. I think looking at the site and the location of the driveway, mm -hmm. where you're coming in sort of aligned with the drop-off canopy, yep. that entrance becomes a lot more evident. Uh, and it looks as if you're using that um, frontage for sign area that that makes sense. I guess my, my biggest question with it at the moment is on that, what I'd consider the backside where the patio yep. is. Mm -hmm. um, it's, is there an entry point from the parking there? It seems like uh, that patio and, and is that the pool back there is kind of screening the parking lot from the hotel? Yeah, there's, there's more, uh, I would call it more of an actually an exit. So I think the way that courtyard wants this function is is a guest would come into the building and then they would function from inside out um, rather than a, a, an outsider or someone from the parking lot coming into that courtyard area so like you know it'd be guests it, it, the restaurant is primarily for guests it's not a I, I don't believe it's you don't make reservations outside it's not like a public um, restaurant just seems if you're parking along that uh, the southeast property line, you got a long hike around the building to find the entry and get to it, and it's not overly welcoming on that backside. Mm -hmm. um, that being the case, I don't know if you had looked at shifting the building to just get the driveway back there for fire department access to get more parking out front closer to the entrance, or was there not room for that? Correct. So, so yeah, uh, if you want to zoom in there. So basically the way that, that that shared entry point there is, I mean, that obviously can't move. The orientation of the building itself, um, it, you know, it, it lends itself be, <laughs> being uh, in, that, in that orientation. Um, but I guess are you saying like trying to get a double row of parking on that side there? Yeah, just where uh, the, the cursor is side? now if I'm parked along this back side. Yep. I have to go the whole way around the building to oh, the front door sure. to get access. Oh to no, the sorry. There, there's entry points on each side of it. Okay. On each side, you just can't go. Sorry, you just can't come from the. Sure, that's yep. That'd be great. Yep. Yeah, our floor plan. Yep. So those sides are have entry points. Sure, that would, that would make sense. Yep. Yep, right there. Okay. So, yeah, if on the top, this is plan plan view on top there where your mouse is, you would just come off to the sides, 
um, and each side of it has has entry points for general public. So you'd have like your your key fob. You'd obviously like check in in the front, the but the ends of fob. the building. Yep. Rather than through. Yeah. That. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Sorry. You see where that is. Yep. You... Yes. And really, that's a that's a single row parking, I believe, uh, on that on that southwest mm -hmm. side. So yes, there will be some parking, but the majority of it is is on the the north, east, and the southwest, uh, where the double rows of parking are 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 sitting. Other questions or comments, Jerry? No, I was just going to comment. I've stayed at quite a few of those properties, and usually you check in in the front, and they are, a lot of them are on combined lots like we see here, and you check in, and I tend to go to the back of the building like you're pointing out, but you do have access once you've checked in with your yep. key. You just They just don't want random people coming in off the parking lot, so you can't get out there right. freely. Yep. And if you're eating inside, it's a controlled locked area to the patio area Correct. so that, yep. once again, you don't have random people. But I, I personally think that that side of the building looks better than the canopy side anyway. That, that's just my input. <laughs> on the, Steve, can you, I think it's on sheet nine. Page nine. Page nine. So on page, on this, can you go to put this on this? Okay, on this screen, on this, image it shows these it shows grills next to the windows that I'm guessing are air conditioning units but then that's not shown on any of the other drawings after that um, so the question that I have because I've seen a lot of these new hotels going up all over and those air conditioning units that you obviously have to have in each of the yep. um, rooms you know always are the white against some other color and they stick out like a <laughs> sore thumb and that's all yeah. you see on the facade is these air conditioning things so i'm just curious what the plan is for these on the building if they're going to follow what's on that one image but sure so they're not so shown on are, any of yeah, the other those are, images those are p tax you have I've, they've stayed in a hotel um so yeah what what we what i what marriott obviously would do too but um we'd have them they're um architecturally like a kynar painted louver and it, would, and it would match the EFIS or um, if it's in the gray panel. So it would match the, the um, adjacent material. Yes, I believe that's how, yeah, that's how their prototype is set up. Yep. Underneath, yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep, this is, the, yep, they have the window and then the unit is off to the side. Yep. Yep. Good, good question. Thanks for clarifying, Chad. Other questions or comments, concerns? The gray panels that are shown on the elevation, what material is that? Uh, so it's, it'll be a fiber cement panel. So it'll, it'll have a... Um, a hook like cladding system on the back side of it and they um and they're just long narrow panels um that sit on this um this track system thank you yep and our same old question with mechanicals not seeing any indicated on the elevations are they screened with a parapet yeah. yep so yeah the reason why you don't see them is yep the the any 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 mechanicals that will be on the roof will be will we usually inboard them but uh, they should be covered by uh, either height or or parapet and then um, the stuff that you see on those renderings uh, which were the by the pool there's there would be a, a mechanical system and we'd screen that and then over by where um, we have one next to the courtyard area, um, that would house the uh, commercial kitchen that would um, would have uh, units out there. So yep, everything should be would mostly we'll be, be screened. screened. Yep. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right there. So the, that that one on the right would be uh, the one for the pool equipment room for the pool, and then to the left of the back courtyard area. Um, the if you if you go straight in 
yeah, so right there, the first little blip, yep. Straight in that, that direction is, is straight into the, uh, the commercial kitchen. So I would certainly entertain a motion at this point. We have a motion and a second for approval as presented. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is approved. Great. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much. Yeah. Looks like our next meeting is scheduled for the 24th. Yeah, well, it happens. Perfect. Uh, any other business from board members to discuss? If not, do we have a motion to adjourn? All in favor? We are adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone.